All right, people, welcome back. More card reviews. So, yes, my new mic came in. I uh, apologize for this video is just a little bit late going up, but uh, I sat there all morning. If the, As soon as the mic, new mic came in, up and boxed it, plugged it in, got everything all set up, and the first thing I did with it was record this because, uh, you know, I hyper-shipped it. I hyper-shipped in pretty much one day. It was a little bit extra, but I wanted to make sure I got here on time. So, uh, despite missing the, the Vitamin Y live stream, which I apologize, I still can get you guys your Monday content. So, here we are. So, of course, you're still going to be getting your card review. You're going to be getting your daily duels. Uh, I'm not not sure if I sound much different, but it's a much better quality mic. I got the pop filter, so so I'll start beatboxing on this thing, but uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully everything will be uh, great quality for you guys, and uh, we can just go ahead and get started. So today we are looking at Lullaby of Obedience. So um, I can't believe they actually made this card. You know, it's just lately, you know, well, not even lately, just been doing that a lot. Uh, cards that they kind of skipped over, they're just going back and being like, hey, let's go ahead and do this card. So I believe this is a card that uh, that Kaiba used against Yugi to take his uh, his Slifer, right? He took his Slifer, and then Yugi got it back with uh, Exchange. And so uh, let's go ahead and see how this card is as an actual real card and determine whether it's good or not. So pay 2,000 light points. Hmm. That's, that, that's kind of costly. I mean, 2,000 light points, that's a solid morning. And, you know, if, if I'm going to pay 2,000 light points, you better do something really great. I'm going to be comparing you to, you know, solid morning's case in this. Because <laughs> 2,000, that's solid morning. Declare one monster name. All right. Your opponent looks through their deck, and if they have a declared card, they reveal one of them uh, and apply one of the effects. Okay, so... Uh, they either add that card to your hand or they special summon that monster to your side of the field and attack position, ignoring summoning conditions. Interesting, interesting. So I can definitely see how uh, this would uh, mess you up, and I like how they uh, they they worded it. I, I, I believe previously they made it so you get to choose, and if you got to choose, that'd be extremely broken. But no, your opponent gets to choose which effect will apply. Uh, all you have to do is just, you're either going to get that monster to your hand or your side of the field, which means that you're even not with resources. You play this, you get a card, and, you know, uh, your opponent doesn't neg. It's a card, it's a monster from their deck that doesn't count as resources. So you even out, your opponent evens out. No one pluses, no one does anything. It's just, you got one of your opponent's monsters, whether it be on your side of the field, in attack position, or in your hand. So, uh... What what can I, what can you do with this? Uh, maybe a little bit in the mirror match. I could possibly see that. Uh, you know, I'm playing like monarchs. You're playing monarchs. I can go ahead. Oh well, I didn't open up with this particular monarch well, uh, that I wanted. You know, I wanted a I wanted a Erebus. I didn't get it. All right, let me play a, a lot of Bible beatings. Pay two thousand life points. I'm gonna call Erebus. You're gonna go ahead and give me that Erebus, and whether you summon it to my side of the field or add to my hand, I'm gonna get it. Right. Uh, same thing with Cosmos and all of that. And of course, uh, you know. You can call a Dark Destroyer that can add the Dark Destroyer to your hand, in which case you might have some shenanigans with that with your own Cosmo card, or that can summon to your side of field, which of course uh, he, uh, means Dark Destroyer was summoned and you get the pop. So, mm. so that's nice and all. Uh, my big gripe with it is that, of course, you may be the controller of the card now, whether it goes to your hand or summon to your side of field, but in the end of the day, your opponent is still the owner of the card. Therefore, whenever that card uh, is sent to the graveyard, it will go to your opponent's graveyard, and you know them shenanigans that can ensue. So, on one hand, yeah, you just get to get one of their monsters and either add it to your hand or special summon to your side of the field, depending on what your opponent wants to choose, but it's going to go to their graveyard. So, in a sense, it's kind of like their own weird, foolish burial. So... In a sense, you know, so I, yeah, sure, I can go ahead and, uh, you can go ahead and call Armageddon Knight. Yeah, I can either, you know, summon the Armageddon Knight to your side or add it to your hand. And, you know, you can, if I add it to your hand, you can always hold on to it, just never play it and just, you know, have me out of one of my cards. But, uh, you know, if you summon it to your side of field and I kill it, it's going to go to my graveyard. It's my card, you know. So, yeah, sure, you can go ahead, call you, Bell. Sure, call, call Terra Incarnate. I'll be glad to go ahead and summon Terra Incarnate to your side of the field, ignoring summon the kitchen cards. Then when I kill that Terra Incarnate and it goes to my graveyard, it's going to resolve in my graveyard, I get Ultimate Nightmare. So, mmm, mmm, I see, so that, that, that's definitely a problem. Uh, another one of the gripes with this card is it's a little slow. It's a little slow. Uh, it's only a normal spell card, so, 
You're not, you know, activating it during my turn, interrupting any of my plays or anything along those lines, you know? You're just playing it during your turn, slow as possibly to use to spell speed one. You know, it's not like Minecraft where you can just interrupt your opponent's plays, and I side that card that interrupts the opponent's plays. This card is only as fast as it can be activated during your turn. Uh, and you can only get monsters, you know? At least in Minecraft, I can declare, you know, spell or trap or monster, whatever. I can declare a card. This can only get a monster in your opponent's deck, uh, of course, because you've got to either add that uh, card to your hand or special summon to your side of field, that monster. So, uh, overall, I, I, I'm not a big fan of it. I'm not a big fan of it. I don't think I would side deck it. I don't think I would, I would you know, main deck it. If, really, if I know what you're playing and uh, and I'm going to side against you, I probably won't side this. Like I said, it's kind of decent for the mirror match. But these are, cards, these are monsters in your opponent's deck. These are not resources. You know, if, if it was something in your opponent's hand, if you got to activate and, you know, call something that's in your opponent's hand and take something out of their hand and do something with it, maybe a little bit tough. But this is just card. This is just monsters in your deck. That's not, that's not resources. They'll probably have plenty more unless you're calling something that's that one, you know. Like, ah, Thunder King Ryle. Aha, I get your Thunder King Ryle. But still, you know... Uh, it's just not a resource. I'd rather hit you with the mind crush and, you know, and crack something in your hand. I'd rather, shit, I'd rather play Prohibition. At least that's a continuous spell that, you know, I call it. And, you know, no matter if you have it in your hand, in your deck, whatever, you cannot play that card until you get rid of this Prohibition. If there's something in your hand, I'm just kind of taking a monster and it's still going to go. You're still, I'm maybe the controller, but you're still the owner. And I'm just not sure how I feel about that, especially for 2,000 light points. Mind crush, free. Freaking uh, Prohibition, free. This, I got to pay 2,000 life points just to take a monster from your deck that's not even resources, and you get to choose what you do with it. Like, I mean, I guess, you're like, oh, well, some people are talking about, well, it's good against Exodia decks. Yeah, that's nice and all. So you play this, your opponent's trying to resolve it, and you get to go ahead and pick a piece of the Exodia either out of their deck or out of it. And keep in mind, maybe you maybe you know what pieces they have in their hand, maybe you don't. For all you know, you could play this and be like, all right, well, give me Exodia's left nipples. And they're like, oh, sorry, I already got Exodia left nipple in my hand. You just pay 2,000 life points, you get nothing. Or, you know... Sure, you get Exodia's left nipple. They get to decide, you know. Mm, well, if I put it in their hand, they're just never going to get it out of their hand. So I'm going to summon to my side, to their side of field, kill it, hopefully, and then get it back. So, mm, you know. So, um, but at the same time, I could probably just, oh, you're playing Exodia? Because you got to have some knowledge. You know, you can't just throw this in, in your deck. you got to have some knowledge to what your opponent's playing. Therefore, if you have knowledge to what your opponent's playing, you can always, while you're signing this in, you can also sign Mind Crush. My opponent's playing Exodia. Mind Crush. Hit you with that Exodia piece. You know, you know, prohibition. Call a particular card that you absolutely don't want your opponent to play. You know, it doesn't have to be a monster. It could be any card. So, I'm just saying there's just better cards. And the 2,000 life points, I don't think it's really worth it, you know? Uh, and maybe if you're trying to be cute with something with you and your opponent and you have something planned together, then maybe, you know? Like, oh, wow, uh, I'm going to call Zushin. And you summon Zushin to my side of the field, ignoring summon again. Ah, ha, ha, ha. But no, you know? Uh, situationally, this card, I don't, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to be like, yeah, I would totally side deck three of these. Uh, it's an interesting card. It's cute, but that's really what it is. An interesting card that's cute, but not necessary. Not necessary. We have much better side deck cards. So uh, there we go, people. There is a card review. This is what I think about Lullaby of Obedience. So hopefully the mic sounded fine and everything is good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this video to you guys. Go ahead in the comment section below. Tell me how, how everything sounds, if it's okay. And uh, hopefully I can continue to produce content for you with uh, my new mic. So uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for being so patient with me.